Welcome back to Words of the Mother, still to come is wine time. But first, let's rejoin our chat with David. You mentioned you, you're a dad mm. as well. When were you? Was your son watching you on TV when you were in? Well, he was six months old, I think, when oh, we okay. did the very first series of Maid Marian. So we hired a cottage mm -hmm. down along with quite a lot of the other crew as well and some of the other actors. And I brought uh, Dinah, my wife, and Nick, my son, who was a little baby, down. Mm. And they became very much part of what was going on. And I think it was in series three, Nick actually had a little part in uh, oh, really? one of the episodes. And it was great because uh -huh. he became a firm favourite with all of the crew. And so um, uh, I had this Norman uh, guards uh, outfit mm which was, looked like chain mail, but was actually quite heavy knitted wool and yeah, painted. Yeah. Um, and they made a little mini costume for him as well. Oh, so I've cute. got some photographs at home of oh, the two of us. Oh, for the mantle, that is exactly. so cute. Yeah, it's on the mantelpiece now. Oh. Yeah. So did he see you on TV when he was growing up at all? Yeah, so, so then as he, as he was older, obviously when May Marion was very popular at the time at which he mm. started school, so I think he got a lot of kudos out of that. Did you know, he? I my, bet. That's my dad. That's oh. my dad you know. <laughs> and it's a thrill to be able to do that for your kids as well. But oh. at the same time, I yeah. wanted to try and give him obviously as, as normal a life as possible and not make him think that, that, that life was necessarily that show busy. Um, what were you like as a parent? Were you, were you quite a comical dad? Were you somebody that couldn't read a bedtime story without a funny voice? And yeah, well I did. I used to do the bedtime stories. We, we used to share it, my wife and I used to share. Yeah. But you know, when I used to do it, I used to do all the voices. And I used to do that all the way through. In fact, when, when he was at primary school, uh, I was uh, a school governor at the school. Mm -hmm. I was chair of governors, in fact, for a while. And from when he was about eight, I used to go in every week and work with his class on reading. And it's something I've always tried to impart, not just to my son, but to kids in general. Yeah, that's so, a lovely thing to do. So I used to go in every week. And in the, in, in the last year at school, the first Harry Potter book had just come out. Mm -hmm. So I went and I read the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone yeah. on a weekly basis all the way through mm -hmm. to the kids. Of course, they lapped it up. And that's a great book to read aloud because there's so many different voices mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I remember getting to the end uh, I had two chapters to go, and it was the week before Christmas. And I used to only go in once a week. Yeah. So I I'd, I'd, I'd went in on the Monday, and then I wasn't due to go back until like for another three weeks. And there was only one chapter left. So the teacher said to me, well, look, it's the week before Christmas. If you're around, you know, would you mind coming in tomorrow and just finishing it off? And so I said, yeah. So I went, in the, I went, so I went in the next day, and, yeah. uh, and the kids were going, oh, and, and there was this kid. Uh, mm -hmm. And he went, oh, Mr. Lloyd, what, what are you doing here? And I said, well, only one chapter to go of Harry Potter. So I've come in to finish the book off. And he looked at me and he went, Mr. Lloyd, you rock. <laughs> that's huge praise. And that is kind of always stuck in my mind. And, that's, and it, but actually it made me realize, he wasn't a terribly academic or very literate kid, Aww. but clearly mm. he loved the experience of having that great book Aww. read to him. Yeah. And, I've, and, and that's always stuck in my mind, the fact that you could actually make kids' world rock by yeah. reading them a book. You've led such an eventful life, such a, you know, varied career, such a, and had such a lovely time with what you've, you know, what, what you've achieved. Mm. And your family means so much to you. Mm. And a big part of your life was obviously, as you mentioned, your your late wife, Dinah. That's right, yes. Who you sadly lost four years ago. That's right, almost four years ago. And you've kind of said that we can talk about yeah. her. Yeah, well, it was, it, it was, you know, a, a, a big part of my life. So Dinah had yeah. MS. Yes. Um, and obviously MS can affect different people in different ways. There mm -hmm. are many people now living to a good age and, and, and dealing with MS, but it, it can affect different people in different ways. And Dinah had it badly. So actually, pretty much from when we first got married, she mm. had MS, and from about three years in, she was in a wheelchair. Right. We married 26 years. Yeah. But most of that time, and Nick well, can, has vague memories of his mum walking around, but most of the time she was in a wheelchair. And in the last two or three years, she mm. was like, really, really ill. That must have had such a huge impact on you. Well, it did, and, 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 and people would say, oh, you're such a saint, you're so brave. Well, actually, you just get on with it, yeah. don't you? Because, because we all have stuff to deal with. Yeah. You know, you all have stuff to deal with in yeah. your relationship. It might not be serious illness, but we've all got... I remember getting yeah. some counselling once and talking to my therapist, and he said, imagine you're at an airport mm -hmm. and you're walking around and you look at all the other people in the airport. Everybody's carrying a bag. Mm -hmm. Everybody's carrying bags. That's a baggage, good analogy. You know? And he said, yeah, you've got... Yours is fairly unwieldy and difficult, but actually, you know, you can carry it, you can get it through. Yeah. At yeah. the time at which she died, we... we, we, we she died at home and Nick and I were both there. Yes. The whole family came and, were, and our friends came, were able to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. 
and I felt we did the right thing by her. Yes. And that's all I can say. And there were times when it was really difficult. It, it had an impact on my career as an actor mm. because I had to decide to stop going away from home because that's what being an actor involved a lot of the time. Yes. But it actually meant that I could focus more on my career as a writer. Yeah. And arguably, I probably became a bigger fish in a smaller pool as a writer than I was ever going to be as an actor. Mm. But at oh. least I could, at least I could be at home. Yeah. You know? uh, there were some really tough times, like some really that. dark times. But my family were hugely supportive. I've a great circle of friends who are very supportive. Mm. I'm in a new relationship now with an yeah. absolutely wonderful woman, and I'm as happy as I've ever been. Oh, that's yeah. really lovely to hear. Oh, David, it's been so lovely meeting you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Can I have a hug and a kiss? Yes, of course <laughs> yeah. you can. Mm. Oh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you, David. Yeah. Lemmy, super nanny, superstar, super stupid. So wine glass is at the ready because Ruth Wiles of the Clifton Wine School is in the house. Hello, Zina. Hello. So this week you have three cover all basis wines for us. Yep. Because when you become a parent quite often, a bit like Freshers Week, you tend to meet new people and you tend to kind of get to know each other. You don't know what each other drinks. You, you have a PTA meeting. You might have a mum's meetup. It's a whole world of fun, Ruth. <laughs> it is handy, I find, since, especially since my son started school, that I have these kind of staples. OK. So what are we going to kick off with then? We're going to start with the white. Okay. So New Zealand Sauvignon. Basically, when you're buying New Zealand Sauvignon, you're expecting it to smell and taste like tropical fruits, like passion fruit, um, perhaps mango. Mm -hmm. You might have a little bit of gooseberry and cooler climate Sauvignon in there. It smells like Rubicon, I think. You know, those yeah. tropical fruit drinks yeah. that <laughs> are the perfect so. hangover cure unless you've been drinking Mummy's Rubicon. <laughs> Mummy's Rubicon, absolutely. Oh, now that is quite sweet. Actually, it's dry. Is it? Yes, it's just that it's very fruity. Oh, OK. So sweetness refers to purely just how much sugar you can detect, and you de detect that on your tongue. Oh, that's nice. But the flavour is really fruity. But if you ask for a sweet wine, you would get something very different to that. Not I many see. people really would like the okay. sweet wine so much. But yeah. OK. I like it. That's me done with it. Okay. <laughs> One little sip and that's enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, what have you got for us next? So, next, we're on the, the bargain end of the scale again. We have uh, Sainsbury's House Pinot Grigio Blush. Okay, now, Ruth. Yes. If I were to judge a book by its cover, uh -huh. <laughs> I would keep walking. Fair enough, I understand they don't exactly splash out on um, the branding here no, with but the house range. The point you made is really interesting about the fact that, because I often have this, if you if you want a glass or if you want to, mm. like and if, if I'm by myself, my, my other half's at football or something, it does mean that you, you kind of open the bottle and you think, how long have I got to drink that? Because I might not want to drink tomorrow exactly. or the day after. Yes. This is a good alternative. It's a great way of having a glass of wine without having to worry about any of that. So when you when you pour it out of the box, um, there's a bag inside the box that collapses and there's no oxygen going back in. So it's not going to last forever, but it's going to last a lot longer. Which is actually, for me, Ideal. a <laughs> big draw for this. Let's give this a go, shall we? Nice. Delicate. Nice smell. <gasps> Do you like it? I do. Yes. I do actually really like that. It's a bargain. I think it's only about £12 for the whole box, which is three bottles. It's a bit like the chiclet of wine. <laughs> it is a little when bit you, like When that. you look at it and you think, is it going to be that lightweight that it's awful? That is actually really nice. So, Ruth, next one, please. Sure. So, as I was saying, the grape of, uh, of Chianti is Sangiovese. Do you know, I, I can't say the word Chianti without thinking of <laughs> yeah, everybody does that. Uh, made famous by Hannibal Lecter. Yes. How many pairs excellently with human beings? <laughs> but I'm not going to test that out. No, no, because that would be wrong. That would be wrong. Yes. And this is a sort of better value alternative. So instead of Chianti, which is a DOC, which is 
one of the quality levels that you have in Italian wine. But this one instead is the level below. Okay. So it's uh, IGT. So this one is from Marks and Spencers. It's part of their standard range, even in the, the smaller stores you can find it. Mm. And it's a good solid wine. Okay. I do want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but not eat human. No. Lovely. Easy enough to drink on its own, but could go with some food. It just tastes like cherry, really. Yeah, and, that's exactly and it. And that's, you know, perfectly fine for most people. It's yeah. good because it's one of those, exactly as you say, you could have it by itself mm. and enjoy it. And, you know, if you're just having one or two, it's you know. It's not too heavy. It's not too heavy, yes. yeah, definitely. Ruth, as ever, it's been a pleasure. And not just because you bring me booze. Thank you very much. Because you're lovely. <laughs> Cheers. That's all we have time for this week. Join us next week for more chat, for more guests and more booze.